Hello everyone, welcome to Arc Nova Replay Analysis number 8. We have two games to go over today. The first one's just going to be a standard two-player game from current number one player BDW against a roughly 400 rated opponent. The second game is going to be a four-player game. So recently in this uh, Arc Nova stats video, I pointed out Tomowaki, who only plays at four player and has an extremely high win rate, like 150% win rate. And there was a bit of interest in the comments about sort of the differences, how he goes about it. So we're going to look at one of his games after that. Uh, but we'll start with the two player one and I'll just set up the chat and then we're ready to go. And reminder to go full screen. Okay, I think we're good. So, first game we're on Hollywood Hills. This is the classic BDW upgrade sponsors map. You get plenty of sponsors. There's uh, already two in the starting hand. I think Guided School Tours is pretty good. Even the monkey park I'd be tempted to keep because there's species diversity. But species diversity at 5 is blocked, so I guess it's not that important. You don't mind if you get either the second or third slot. Uh, but the Koti could also help for diversity. It's just a decent animal in general. It goes well with the Scarlet Macaw, which is one of the best animals to start with because it gives three posturing. So something like that with an American partner zoo would work out nicely. So maybe these two and the two sponsors. Uh, end goals, research zoo, favorite zoo. Well, always very happy to see favorite zoo. No need to worry about research zoo. Just get to 15 reputation and get easy points. That is what he decide, decides to keep. And he's first player. And there's already some very nice cards on display here. Federal Grant's just a very solid sponsor. Anything that gives you income early is amazing. Uh, the Ibex is part of Europe, also a decent animal. Uh, predator breeding program going to work out very nicely because there's the Coty there and we're getting an American partner zoo anyway. Research could be interesting. Most green cards are interesting. Research could be an easy one to support. But first action, just starting with the American Partner Zoo, it's too important to the game plan to miss out on it, so... Completely, un completely understandable to start with that. Opponent starts with the hand size university, and we are just going to go back to BDW screen. I'd still rather, yeah, okay. I'd still rather start side entrance, but federal grants would be like the number two that I'm happiest to see in my starting hand. I still think side entrance is much, much better. And when is that sponsor's video coming out, by the way? You can see BDW just starts with the size one enclosure. Uh, yeah, I guess this is fine. I would have been tempted to start with the size two, but I guess... You can't really afford both of these animals, can you? It shouldn't make too much of a difference. The opponent builds a size 2 enclosure. Uh, and I did have in my settings... Where is it where the, the opponent's uh, board is underneath you? I had that on my other computer. <laughs> I had that on my computer. This is Gladys's computer. <laughs> my other. <laughs> there we go. So we can just scroll down and look at what the opponent's doing now. I like that much better. So they just build a size 2 over their reputation. I think the thing, Federal Grants is, 
like gives you the money straight away. It gives you a science icon, which is pretty useful, but I'd still rather side entrance. But yes, Fedorancy is very solid. <laughs> solid can mean anything from S tier to A tier, and he goes ahead and snaps it up. Even with the spon like enough sponsors already in hand, yeah, it's definitely you. You want to keep it away from the opponent anyway. Hydrologist also a very solid sponsor over here that's just appeared. Opponent starts with Polar Bear Exhibit, which is great for species diversity and also great. Okay, apparently OBS just crashed, but hopefully we're still good. Building a size 2 here before... Oh, okay, I think I remember why it did this. I think so. You can check. So I built the size 2 here because the next move is going to be the monkey park. Uh, to cover this area and get the 5 money and then be able to play both animals. So that's a nice bit of foresight. Yes, it's fine. Opponents building another size 2, so that's that's for the Ibex. We're not sure what the original size 2 is for just yet. Uh, and they get Waza Small Animals, and from the first H we got Water Playground. Okay, this is the Monkey Park. Can you ask EAD, because he's played in real life, how do they do it on that map to draw the sponsor card? Is it like secret? What is it? We already looked this up. I played on it last week. <laughs> Wait, what? No, but we, we, I think we, we found like a secret way to do it. I don't know if it was meant to be, but it was written in the rule book or not. Uh, the place the monkey park, pick up predator breeding program with the draw from reputation range, which is very useful. I'm a little bit surprised that uh, he didn't just play federal grants, that would also give him enough money to play both animals. And it's ideally, it's one you need to get out before the, the monkey park, so that that move surprised me a little bit. The opponent's drawing cards. Sea turtle tank is not solid. Well, sea turtle tank is okay for species diversity and Reptiles, but that's about it. But also, I don't think it's the worst sponsor out there. Okay, both animals get played. Very, very good start. No, I like double pavilion. Kiosk there makes uh, perfect sense, connected to four different buildings. So income's now at 16. Now, opponent's not too far behind yet. And they play the Ibex. They shouldn't have enough to play anything else, I think. Now, this is a move that surprised me a bit. He spends an X token to use cards at 5, but he doesn't have a hand size university. Like, I guess the bird breeding program is pretty important. Like, it's a very good card to have. But in that position, I would have probably just spent an X token or two and just played one of the sponsors that want to come out. And we can see opponent triggers the break, which means two of these have to go, and honestly, we're sad discarding any of these cards, let alone two. So, I mean, you definitely keep Federal Grants and you, you just keep the green cards, but it's very sad to get rid of those two sponsors. Especially if you're going to upgrade sponsors, they're just easy ones to spam out in one turn. Okay, scores are level. BDW has slightly more income, but slightly less money. Nothing too eventful yet. Uh, but obviously a great time to play one of these cards. Okay, just a great time to take four species diversity. Well, actually, that's an interesting point. Do you want to secure the extra shield from here, stopping the opponent from getting it? Or would you rather the two reputation straight away to get closer to upgrading a card? So BDW prefers the extra shield. 
I guess because we're racing to five here to get the partner zoo, that's an important milestone. So yeah, getting three now would be uh, handy. Takes a worker as well, which I like the move because reputation is very far down here and income is pretty good compared to most games because of the early Scarlet Macaw, double animal played, and federal grants in hand, so income's not going to be as big of an issue. And upgrading build first just to connect to these H's, I guess. Okay, opponent support speaks his diversity uh, at three. They also upgrade build. Okay, now, now I, yeah, I like playing federal grants here before building because we're about to pick up one or two more sponsors. The opponent's just going to go ahead and build. So let's see what sponsors they get. Expert on age is the first one. Probably the best expert. Seeing as age is the best continent. And they've connected to all their H's. The second one they get is Migration Recording. Could be useful if they want to be uh, releasing some animals, give some extra CP. Okay, time to build. That's going to be a great Chaos spot. Uh, just seeing. So he normally likes to leave room for an Aviary right here, so I doubt he's going to cover that. Yeah, just leaving that spot open. Uh, but not actually rushing to cover all these H's. Just covering one of them. I think in that position I probably would have covered one first to see what you get. Expert in Australia is not great. Okay, opponent's drawing cards. So, Julian, the answer to that is yes, and but this this was like really surprising when he did it. He he spends an X token to snap up the anaconda, and he sort of telegraphed it by building the size two here. But out of all the animals, I don't particularly understand why. So it has a discount because it needs the partner zoo. We already have it, so it's like a good value animal plus the water icon. I mean, it's giving good points for the amount of money. But we can't use the Constriction ability, so that's reducing its value a little bit. And drawing from the deck at uh, power five, at Strength 5, you get like three choices anyway. I don't, think, I don't think not playing an animal would be that bad right now. Oh yeah, so opponent also took a work with their first reward, they're spending it now. Uh, they spent an X token to do that, so they could upgrade both animals and sponsors. Hello Lars. Um, so what do you do here as BDW? Yeah, okay. So ideally we want the opponent to get ahead and appeal so we can constrict them. Now, so taking a university now is good. The opponent can't cause the break. That uh, that they don't want to anyway. They've got nine cards in hand. Oh yeah. So they also saw that we snapped up the anaconda, so they they don't want to play animals yet either. And they play explorer, which is another good reason to wait before playing animals cuz now with every animal they play, they get with every new icon they discover, they got get an extra appeal as well. So that's that's one of the best sponsors in the game. Yeah, so I think no point in waiting around. The opponent the opponent probably would have delayed, or like constricting build doesn't do too much anyway. So just play the anaconda and cause the break. I'd say. That would be BD, BDW's plan. Okay, opponent plays Tazzy Devil. Uh, making good use of the pouching ability because they have still too many cards in hand. They, uh, they don't have a second animal to play. They've still got some size 2 enclosures. 
empty. So yeah, while we're out of money, I think some people would play expert in Australia here, but it's 100% not worth it because then you're stuck wanting a break. You can't pouch any cards with it, so this is a good time to take the break. Don't make the mistake of playing a sponsor that doesn't do anything. Plus the opponent has to discard a card. You don't you don't know what sponsors they have. We, well, we know some of them, but... So, I mean, scores are level. Money is level again, but BDW has an income lead of 9 at the moment. Uh, so, we'd say he's a little bit ahead. Although, yeah, okay, the opponent has two universities. B BDW has one of each. Games where the top player lose. Yes, I've done a few where the leading player loses. Uh, okay, so opponent took the Europe partner to... Uh, they have two Europe icons now, so they could look at supporting it at two, or if they have something in hand, they could go all the way to five. I think both are viable. Okay, so this, I did quite like this as well. So pavilion, fine, good. Size 3 enclosure. Must be eyeing the Galapagos Giant Tortoise. Which is good because it has heavy re requirements, which we already meet. We have four America icons. And choosing not to build the kiosk. Firstly, because there's not really a good spot for it. Like, up in the corner here... It's going to give you some income back, but probably not enough to be worth it. Uh, Baboon Rock was the last sponsor we drew. Not too exciting to play, firstly because it needs a rock spot. So if it wants to be played, it's going to have to cover the Avery spot, which I know he would not be happy with. Okay, opponent plays their migration recording. Which is a little bit suspicious. It means they either really want the science uh, icon soon, or that they are going to be releasing animals soon. But neither of these two are really great ones to release. I guess the Tadsy Devil's not too bad. Uh, okay, supporting a project with four cards. Okay, the reasoning probably because we're about to get... Okay, we're about to get two Reputation and a Partner Zoo, so uh, cards would probably be one of the upgrades. So just upgrading cards before you're using it makes sense there. Taking the five income. Now, always take the Partner Zoo when you're given the option. And when in doubt, take Asia. Baboon Rock helps species, but... Uh, yeah, Species already done and dusted this game. I think if it didn't have the, the rock requirement, it'd be more tempted to play it. Or if it even fit in this little gap here, but it's just the, the other direction, sadly. Okay, opponent just builds a size 5 enclosure. And they put animals down, so... Means Well, what that's telling us is that they have a big animal and they can't afford to play it yet, so they probably want to break sooner rather than later. Yes, well, okay, in, the, uh, in this case it doesn't require an X because all sponsors are reduced by one cost on this map once you cover all the H's. So the 6 power is not a, not a problem on this map. Ah uh, yes, so upgrading cards is also important because we want to get the tortoise here. And I will say, I think we have some very lucky draws here. Native lizards, on this map in particular, nine rock spots and they're all like the first nine spots you want to connect to, and we're still under 25 appeal. So amazing right there. Opponent uses cards that fire to snap up Science Institute. 
which mean, well, that's telling us that they definitely have one of those four requirement science sponsors that they want to get out. Uh, playing native lizards before animals here because playing the tortoise would put us over the 25 appeal. Very good move. Did, didn't need to use the next token because it's one cheaper. Opponent plays the Science Institute. And in the same turn, Science Museum. Very nice card. Uh, so, I mean, they, they're kind of behind. They're like, they're, they're half the income, they're half the points, but this sort of combo is going to help them catch up again. Uh, okay. Yes, BDW scoring card is favourite Sue, so we're not too worried about anything else. We know the opponent doesn't have research Sue, which is, I guess, kind of important to know. It means we're not too scared of it. But obviously any research uh, icon they get now is, any science icon is going to be amazing for them. Okay, time for the Galapagos giant tortoise. Uh, the question is, how many of these cards are we selling? Baboon Rock can definitely go. Predator Breeding Program we keep, and... Do we sell the other two, or do we keep Bird Release? I guess you could go either way. Bird Release, just in general, is pretty good, because all, all of the large birds are pretty decent to release. Opponent just X's out build. Uh, they might be ready to play that large animal, and they... They, I assume they want to get it out before the break. This is a good time to get the second uni and upgrade his last card. Parrot's okay to release. The thing is, if you're releasing a sight like a small bird, it leaves the large bird open to your opponent, which is a little bit scary. I think if I wanted to release a small one, it'd be like the Kookaburra would be the ideal one. And upgrading association. That's good because, well, there's no real sponsors that we need to play. We've drawn all the sponsors, we've played some, there's no upgraded requirements, there's none in hand. And the opponent has upgraded sponsors, so we're going to get the cheap donations all to ourselves. Even though I'm sure he would have been very tempted to upgrade sponsors. Okay, the big animal was the European Bison. Giving two very handy Europe tags, going for this Europe 5, and taking all the sponsors from the display. Not a bad move when you can get three sponsors in one go. Uh, that was the only animal played, so still got these size 2 enclosures doing not much. Archaeologist would be pretty interesting for the opponent. Uh, well, it's, it, firstly, it's a science icon, so it's going to give them one CP no matter what. But secondly, it can give them like 10 extra gold or something. It's not bad. 10 extra money. Size 5 enclosure from BDW. Uh, I guess why not? There's no real animal that we're looking to play here. I guess something like a rhino would be perfect for, like, getting Americas, but... I mean, a size 5 enclosure can fit any animal in it, so... It does, it does, uh, give you good options. A bit of a sad move from the opponent, spending two workers to get a partner zoo at strength 5. Uh, yeah, they're just one Europe icon short from supporting it at 5. They're not really going towards Africa very quickly. The upgrade cards is their last upgrade. And they, they take the Australia partner... Uh, no, sorry, they take Africa partner zoo. Makes sense, because it's... I mean, if you're only getting two partner zoos, you probably want... Africa, just in case you get, like, a run of African animals. Okay, drawing one at a time from the deck.
think Reptile Breeding Program also a very lucky draw. To be honest, if that was me, I would have drawn three and then taken Archaeologist. But he'd be very happy to see the Reptile Breeding Program here. Uh, the Lynx could have been interesting to keep because because the opponent's got so many Europe icons, it's good value, but getting the two icons ourselves is kind of a bit awkward now. Because we are fairly progressed in the game. Uh, once you get to 35 points, there's probably only one, two breaks max left. You don't really want to be wasting time trying to find a couple of Europe icons just to get a, just to get an animal out. <laughs> Yes, uh, so yes, he also did pick up a grizzly bear. Um, I don't think he'd be like going like all out to, to build this. It's not an amazing animal. The extra work is not that necessary because he can get it from the third partner zoo. It gives like, it gives okay points. The X tokens are pretty good, but it also gives the opponent to appeal from the polar bear exhibit. So. It's a bit worse than usual. Yeah, I am a little bit surprised opponent didn't uh, draw Archaeologist. And I like this move here. How many people would play the Technology Institute right now? I guess like a lot of people. Because the X tokens are always handy, but... Well, actually, is it that bad? So he goes ahead and triggers the break. I would have been very tempted to play the Tech Institute, because it's potentially... I mean, it's guaranteed 2x tokens. It's potentially a CP at the end if there's a third uni, but that's not a guarantee. Uh, and the thing is, you can always... Because the break was at 8 out of 9, you can always trigger it with, like, a cards action. But I guess he wasn't interested in taking a card's action at strength 2, so... Yeah, also getting out, also triggering the break before the opponent gets out some sponsors, which can't be that bad. They play Science Lab, which is, well, giving them a CP immediately from Science Museum, and it's guaranteeing them two CPs at the end and a card draw, so very nice there. And also playing Victory Column, which is just like one appeal, maybe a couple more appeal at the end of the game. Breeding programs seem freaky good. The, yes, these are going to help a lot. It's almost like too many green cards, but when you're not really going for two out of the three projects on the board, it's very useful to have these green cards in hand because you always want to be supporting projects. It's just much better, much better value than grabbing like a third university or a third partner zoo or something. So yeah, uh, predator first over reptile. I guess it doesn't make too much difference. Opponent has a predator, but not the partner zoo to go with it. Whereas we saw they just picked up the mamba before, so they could they could support reptile breeding program once they play that mamba. So yeah, that's fine. Picking up the Marabou, I guess just like denying Africa from the opponent a little bit. 10 money you're always happy to get. Victory Column, very good card. Keeping favourites, who is the obvious choice. Uh, and okay, unlocking the Partner Zoo reward. Yeah, I guess money's not that tight. X tokens would have been my other consideration. Partner Zoo for Africa, I guess? Australia? Oh, okay, we're eyeing this koala, that's why. Hmm, kind of interesting. So koala, again, slightly worse than usual because the opponent has the polar bear exhibit. But still, still this is a very good animal. It just barely missed out on the top 10 value animals. It's just very good value. Swedish flavored column. 
Every every time I look at her, I think, what a handsome man. I just can't wait for that to be my picture next season. <laughs> okay, we're building a size 3 enclosure for the koala. And we have one leftover build, so might as well be a pavilion for a point. Clevering down sponsors. Yeah, I think at this stage it's... There probably will be an there probably will be another break, I guess. But playing Tech Institute for a couple of uh, X tokens not essential. Okay, opponent is playing Eurasian Brown Bear. Uh, if you wanted one animal to get you back in the... Like, I haven't been really paying attention to the scores, but the opponent's quite far behind in income and in points. But if you wanted one animal to get you back into the game, this would be it. It's a bear icon for them. It gives them a multiplier on associate. Uh, it gives them that hard-to-get last worker because they haven't upgraded association. So this is just amazing. And it's the fifth Europe icon they need, so... Perfect, perfect animal for them. They take two reputation from the 5 CP reward, which uh, allows them to draw the koala right out from underneath BDW. But I guess the size 3 enclosure here can be for the marabou anyway, it's not the end of the world. So let's have a look. It would be like kind of tempted just to play the monkey out of spite, but you don't really want it. Well, actually, would you rather play the marabou or the... I'd still be tempted to play the monkey because it gives you an X token as well from this. But it just plays the marabou. Uh, might scavenge something useful. Okay, I'm going to call that extremely lucky. Finds, first of all, has the requirement of three reptiles, which how often are you going to have that in a game? Because of, because of native lizards that we drew randomly before. Yeah, it's a size 5 animal and it just fits in this size 5 enclosure we have left over. I'm going to call that very lucky. Allows to snap up two cards as well. Marabou is Africa, but at this stage of the game, I think it's very unlikely we're getting four or five Africa. And it doesn't particularly matter because there's still these two projects that we can play. I, so I guess the point was that the Marabou is pretty good to release. That might be the reasoning. Uh, so snaps up Expert in Large Animals and the Thieving Monkey. Okay, opponent has a big turn coming here. So supporting Europe at five, takes snapping, takes the Foreign Institute. Uh, for the eight CP reward, they get to play a sponsor from hand and they play Foreign Institute, which actually, uh, funnily enough, I didn't actually realize that interaction. Uh, it would normally cost six, but on this map, it only costs five because uh, of the discount from the H's. I'm not sure if that is intended to work like that. Well, I guess it does say each sponsor card is minus one when played. So that's a nice pickup for them. They just take their card from 13 reputation randomly. And they release the bison. That's also an extremely good animal to release. Uh, and with migration recording, this move gives them like 7 CP minus their 6 appeal that the moose had, the bison had. So now they're, they're ahead in points. Their income is still horrible, but money is quite even. And honestly, because there's going to be another break, they might just have enough money anyway to get to the end of the game. 
Okay, BDW is drawing from the deck. Picking up the Llama as well. I guess because A, it can be released. Although not really an issue because we have these two cards here. But I guess it also flocks with the Red Panda so it can save space. Opponent's going to draw cards as well. They just draw them all at the same time from the deck. Don't, don't really like that, but... Um, here I guess we'd just do the Reptile Breeding Program first. No reason to let the opponent know that there are birds out there. And these cheap donations are really helping out BDW. So many American animals right now. The opponent actually triggers the break, so even though they have sponsors, like, in reach. I, I, I reckon they should have just kept playing sponsors. The thing is, Archaeologist, like, even though it's not going to give much benefit now, it's still a CP. They can... I guess they can't cover all their border spots, but... with When the money's about even, I guess it's not too bad just delaying the break. But also the money from the upgraded sponsors is pretty useful. BDW deciding to get rid of all the sponsors and keep all the animals. And the opponent snaps up the giant panda because they triggered the break, so they're snapping. Okay, BDW doesn't have snapping. And they also get to take something with Science Lab as well, which they just draw from the deck. That's a pretty cool finishing move for the game, playing three petting zoo animals in one times two animal action. Okay, this move I really, really, really liked from BDW. Uh, the X tokens is like whatever, but... I, I probably would not even just think to build a reptile house here. But that's just bad game awareness from me, because a reptile house frees up this size 5 and size 3 enclosure, both from these guys. So, perfect thing to play right now. You also get the X tokens back from covering up both the X token spots on the ground. Size 2 enclosure, I'm not sure about, but he's obviously worked out that he's going to play all these animals. Okay, opponent's going to associate. <laughs> they release their bear now, which is pretty decent value. I with migration recording, it's like it's very good to release everything. So I mean it's done some work. It's given them the science tag that they needed for Science Museum, and it's given them two CP now and an X token, so I was a bit harsh on it. It's a pretty good card. <laughs> Animal time for BDW. Playing the Vulture is great for the low mountain range. It's a good bird to release. Funnily enough, gets the bird breeding program back that just got removed from the from the slot. It got removed a while ago. Playing the Snowy Owl because you might as well play the, the animal that's going to let you draw. See if you get something better. Rhino, sadly too late for the Rhino, but might as well keep it anyway so the opponent can't scavenge it. Opponent's going to play animals, and all of a sudden this has become a much closer game. Like, I thought the opponent was, like, completely out of it before. Okay, they play their Koala. Doesn't, uh, it's in a size 5 enclosure, but it doesn't really matter. This gives them a second bear for their polar bear exhibit, plus some extra handy points. And Raccoon, beautiful to... This is the sort of card that you want to play in the endgame. 
that, that lets you boost a suit association up to five. Also gives them uh, an explorer tag for the first America's symbol that game. So yeah, 97 is a good spot to be on. Uh, I guess boosting association didn't matter because of all the X tokens they have, but still fine. BDW realizes that uh, the opponent that he's going to have two more turns before the opponent ends the game, basically. So out of all these, yeah, the Tapir makes sense. It gives seven points total. Might as well dig from the hand to see if there's anything better, but there isn't. And Grabby Monkey gives five appeal and an X token, which we don't really care about. So, pretty unfortunate from the opponent that they didn't, they, well, they clearly didn't have a project to support because they have all their workers. Um, yeah, they don't have a reptile for breeding program, but I mean, finishing the game with medical breakthrough is not bad. Eight points. Yeah, okay, it's a pretty decent last move. 11 points because of Science Museum as well. And BDW just going to get some reputation for two more points and release the vulture. Getting some money so that he can donate. It would depend on the project. But uh, a release one for the opponent could have been, well actually maybe not, they don't have any big animals left. BDW just w uh, barely wins, so they got endgame points from federal grants, and yeah, favorite zoo obviously coming in clutch for CP. Opponent had large animal zoo, uh, which does make releasing those big animals slightly worse because it is basically offsetting migration recording. Because the CP you gain from that, you're losing from large animal zoo. They finish with zero from it. Still really close. They got. A ton of bonus points, or did they? They got one from polar bears. They are, yeah, they clearly finished with less appeal because they were releasing everything, so they got two, two appeal from that. Actually, not many. They missed out on Foreign Institute as well. Ah, oh, but so, okay, Science Lab gave them two CP. Yeah, that is interesting which, uh, which goal they discarded. I'll check on that in a sec. So, yeah, I think... Very well played from both of them. The opponent's roughly 400 rated now, so they're no slouch. And it seemed like they were out of it for most of the game, but they came back with some really strong moves at the end. Going for 5 Europe really paid off for them. Uh, yeah, Sponsors Upgrade was worth it as well for them, because they had Explorer and Science Lab. Let's uh, let's see what they had. Let's see what their opening hand was as well. Oh wow! Climbing Park. I'm actually really surprised they didn't keep Climbing Park because they started with the Ibex as like one of their animals. But yeah, we pretty much know what they kept from here. Well, somewhat they kept Polar Bear Exhibit. They clearly kept Science Museum. And they kept Tazzy Devil, so what was the last one? I mean, I would always keep the Eagle. Yeah. Okay, they undid. Oh, they didn't keep the Eagle, they kept Asia Release. Yeah. I think Eagle there was a very good keep for them. But now it makes a bit more sense why they went for the Ibex so hard. But yeah, I'm surprised they didn't keep climbing park. Anyway, yes, very well played game. Uh, not upgrading sponsors, but 
like, as he said when I was talking to him last week, there weren't any of those triggers to, like, make him upgrade sponsors, so he just didn't. Yeah, okay, so, yeah, Climbing Park would have given 2 CP and they would have been 1 point short. So that's how close it was, but yeah. If, like, they had Favourite Zoo and BDW didn't have Favourite Zoo, game completely the other way around. Let's uh, have a drink and look at this four-player game next. So, something I've been wondering. Would you prefer to be last player in a four-player game? Because to me it looks like a very good deal. You get to start with three appeal, which is just instantly giving you plus three income. If I was playing four player games, I'd want to be last like every single time. I guess the downside is you probably don't get the university or partner zoo that you want all the time, but you also have less, less chance to snap up a good card from the display, but it still seems like a really good deal. So yeah, I've watched all this game all the way through. I'm mainly going to be focusing on Tomoaki because there's going to be a, a lot of moves and it'll be quite slow, I think. So I'm not going to worry about the opponents too much. I've played a bit of uh, four-player Castles of Burgundy recently. It's very different. You basically always get the animals that you want. Okay, there we go. We can just scroll down if we want to see what the opponents are doing. It's awful. I don't know. I think I'd prefer being last, but I guess I'd I guess I'm gonna like go last one game and I'm gonna miss out on everything I want and I'll probably be like, okay, I just wanna be first. But I think three appeal is not insignificant. Yeah, Castle of Burgundy in four position, uh, fourth position is very different. Alright, so let's look at the projects we have here. Uh, let's, let's look at our end game goals. Diverse species, so we care about what Blaster Beer has, and Aquatic Park. Not really delighted with either of them, but it's fine. What do you keep here? Hydrologist is an easy pick for me. Uh, okay, we can also look at the strength of these guys. So, the, yeah, the other thing that I was thinking of with four-player games is you're just not going to find as many of those high-strength opponents. So you're probably going to win more on average because your opponents are going to be on average weaker. But these guys are actually not that weak. Like, 200, 200, 400. When I was thinking about, like, the opponents he's going to play, I was thinking, like, all 100s. But these are not the worst opponents. I mean, the good thing about this game is that every player has Silver Lake. Uh, so it's like equally as powerful for everyone, but especially in four play games when you have less control over when the game ends and breaks and everything, it's definitely a power that you want to be setting up to use. And it's something that these weaker players won't necessarily do. So, okay. Hydrologist, I like. Engineer, pretty good as well. Um... For the animals, we have two Australia right here, which is pretty tempting just to support Australia at two. But yeah, Hydrologist, uh, easy pick. I'd be tempted to like start both of these and Engineer. It's interesting. Well, okay, starting with one makes sense if you plan on getting the Australia Partner Zoo. Uh, which is not guaranteed to happen as fourth player. But we'll have a look at how the game pans out. Okay, opponent number one plays Water Playground. We don't care too much. Doesn't, doesn't affect us with these projects. Opponent two is drawing cards from the deck. 
So yeah, much less control over the break. I think the thing about four player games is there are going to be more breaks because as soon as one of these players doesn't have a sponsor to play, they're just going to move the break marker forward five and then it's like very close to a break after everyone takes cards. So you're going to see more breaks. Opponent number three starts with America Partner Zoo, which is good. It's uh, it's one of the projects here. This is an easy first move hydrologist. Just the amount of money that you're going to get back from building around this lake is insane. You actually turn a profit building. Opponent number one builds a petting zoo. Opponent number two, Expert on Americas. That is a different player to, to the one that got the Americas Partner Zoo. So there's a bit of competition there. I, I have watched this game fully, but yes, let's not spoil it for everyone else in the chat. Okay, opponent number three builds a size three enclosure. With the American part, Partner Zoo, we can kind of speculate what they have. Just can't think of any size 3 American animals. Maybe one of the monkeys. Or maybe the... No, it wasn't next to a rock, so it's not the cougar. Okay, here's that Australia Partner Zoo. Could have... I guess could have waited to get it. But... Um, Okay, maybe not. Two of the two of the players haven't spent their workers yet, so yeah, just secure it. First opponent gets the hand size uni, which is I think very good in four players, but maybe not after watching this game. Okay, some also interesting things in the display here. We obviously have a couple of American animals. We have an elephant. Opponent three is just drawing. Okay, building. How many people would build a size four enclosure for the alligator here? While it's while uh while build is at strength five. Doesn't care. Just goes ahead and builds a size one for the bird of paradise. And how many people here would draw from the deck? Because this move to me is absolutely insane. But he just draws the monkey. So, I mean, obviously good because primates are one of the projects, but also bad because primates are one of the projects, because now this power does nothing. So you're just paying a lot of money for, like, decent points, but a primate icon and some points. <laughs> that is, like, asserting his dominance, yes. Hey, opponent one snaps a sheep. I think snapping a sheep is a very weak move. Uh, this is the one that built a petting zoo. I mean, it's probably not that bad if they have a second petting zoo animal in their hand already. It is the player with the hand size uni, so not, not an ideal move. Okay. Opponent number three builds a pelican. Uh, we will note that it's orange. They have not spent their worker yet, so... Pelican is one of those animals that you're quite happy to release. So we could be seeing that. Opponent number four plays expert in Africa. Not a huge fan of that move. It's not... Like, it gives a clever ability. It gives a point, but it's not one of the projects. So, I mean, it's kind of a wasted move, I think. Yeah, that's the thing about the petting zoo animals in this game. It, uh, not helping with any of these projects. And you really want to secure one of these at five or you're going to be in trouble. Uh, yep, playing the bird of paradise before any break. Good, building a kiosk just for more money. Okay, uh, opponent one plays the sheep, and okay, they did have a second petting zoo animal. I mean, it's it's understandable then. Maybe not good, but it's understandable why they did it. 
opponent number two is releasing the Pelican. That's going to give him a huge head start. Um, not really like amazing rewards here, but in four player games with these rewards limited, you'd still rather any of these than five money or well, most of the time. But two, two reputation is very useful to get early, I will say that. And they can get up straight away. What do they take as their... They take the two enclosure, which I don't particularly like. I mean, it's it's probably not as bad on the lake because you're just building around anyway, but especially when you release, you probably don't need more enclosures. I'd just take the money. Yeah, they get the two reputations, so they have upgraded two cards already, which is a nice start for them. I'm not sure I'd upgrade cards either. So I guess build is less important for them because they've got two enclosures now. They upgrade cards and sponsors. A little bit odd picks, but we're not analyzing them. Uh, have we seen what player four? So player four has just two size three enclosures and no animals yet. A little bit suspicious. They might have forgotten that they need a rock for the cougar or something. Uh, here we have Tomoaki playing the engineer. Game plan, not really sure what's going on yet. They have a probis they have like a big nose monkey, but no other primates. Uh, they've got two Australia, which is nice. They're going to support that early. Yeah, I think if you do have engineer, then that would be a good reason not to upgrade build. I still think I would, especially on this map. Because the, this spot around the lake is pretty important. On other maps, it's not a big of a deal. Uh, we just saw native farm animals get played, which uh, JD is not going to be happy about at all. Because it only gave three points for this opponent. Uh, Silver Lake's not really like a great map to to like maximize it, but you can still do better than three. Maybe it would be a decent map for it with Diversity Researcher. But yeah, you're just building along the edge and covering edge spots as you go. Not great for native farm animals. Okay, Red's playing very suspiciously. We know that they already have the two size 3 enclosures and now they add a size 1 enclosure to it. Tomoaki is going to build. I'm a little bit surprised. I mean, if you want monkeys, this would be a good time to snap up a decent monkey. I guess the slight... I'm not sure why he doesn't snap up this monkey, to be honest. <laughs> Might be misunderstanding the, the power of native farm animals. Okay, so it just builds two pavilions. One thing that we're going to see in this game is just how much Tomoaki values money in four-player games. We're going to see that with his next move as well. First opponent building a size 3 enclosure, we don't really care. Second opponent going to play animals, okay, they play their American primate. Good, because it's on two projects. And they have expert in America, so they have to build a kiosk. They put Bill down with Clever. Okay, Red's finally playing animals. We do care a little bit because we are... Uh, we care about what species they play because we want to... Because uh, diverse species is like copying them. Snap ends the round too early? Maybe. Okay, so the first animal they play is the Scarlet Macaw. Two kiosks and a pavilion. That explains the size one and the cougar. So they might have honestly just forgot about the rock requirement. But that's also going to progress the break marker further. And yeah, Tomoaki not interested in the break at all. Just wants to build pavilions now. 
But look at that income. After that gets built, 19 compared to 15, 11, 18. And that was the Scarlet McCall player that has 18. So just killing it on income. It does look beautiful as well. Look at that. That's my kind of guy spamming out pavilions. Orange is just going to trigger the break uh, with their upgraded sponsors. So, the, I mean, they could have played Geologist, which I think would have been a decent move. It's a good card. Uh, yeah, but I mean, 10 money early is... Can't really complain about that. Okay, the elephant dies. Orange gets to build their size 2 enclosures, so let's look at Orange's board. Just a lot of empty enclosures. I mean, when I was new, I was like all about spamming kiosks and pavilions, and now I'm still like that. So, I mean, I think increasing your income is a fairly intuitive idea. But yeah, spending two actions uh, just to build two pavilions per action. Not what I expected. Not what I expected going into this game. Okay, red just draws. I assume Tomowaki is going to do the same. Uh, do we care about snapping the monkey, or are we just going to draw from the deck? Okay, we care about snapping up this monkey. So one thing I was thinking of now is because of the double rock requirement. Like, you can't fit them both in here, but I mean, there's rocks up here. But yeah, okay, sunbathing less good because we probably want to keep these cards. And clever. Clever is an ability that Tomoaki utilizes very well, and we're going to see that throughout the game. Orange is supporting. America's at two. There's some competition from Red. Red already has three Americas, so I don't particularly mind conceding at it and just getting the two right now. Oh, that's the player that already released the Pelican, so they are just cruising up the, C the CP chart. Red plays Ornithologist. Uh, not The bird birds are not part of the projects, but in four-play games especially, those expert cards are just much better. Especially the bird one, because birds are always good value animals. Tomoaki going ahead and supporting Australia at two. Upgrading build uh, first. And getting an extra worker. Blue just getting their second uni. I mean, good for card upgrades, but a little bit sad when, when everyone else is supporting projects. I'm not full screen. I was wondering why everything is... Yes, that's much better. Okay, orange is drawing them one at a time, so... Yeah, even at 200 ELO, we know orange is still a decent player that knows what's going on. Red also supporting a project. So yeah, blue would feel pretty far behind not supporting something. Uh, bird breeding, breeding program, very useful. Get some up to four rep reputation immediately. They upgrade build. And red took. Extra worker. Tomoaki going to build at strength three. Well, okay, yes. Building because we have no animals to play and no sponsors to play, so... I mean, things are a little bit out of order, but it's not too bad, especially with Engineer. Yeah, look at all this money back. Uh, look at all this money coming back from Hydrologist. And just double Pavilion again. I love it. Orange had no money at the time. Okay, that makes a lot more sense then. They couldn't play Geologist because they had no money. Fair enough. That's my bad for missing that. 
first opponent plays giraffe. Um, sort of a nothing animal because it's not part of any of these projects. It's good if they're going to use it to put sponsors down at one, but they don't, so it's not like even a clever ability, it's just just an animal with some points, but not a particularly good one if it's not part of any of these projects. Okay, Orange plays a platypus and gives venom to pretty much everyone. And they also play a primate, so they're at two primates now. We know Tomowaki has ambitions for primates, but they don't have very many right now. Uh, Orange is also out of money again, so they may be looking to, tr to trigger the break soon. Maybe after they spend their second worker. Red just doing some building. Just building a bit of everything. And takes the hippo, which... Yeah, Hippo I can understand, I guess, because it's it gives an extra action, and obviously extra actions are better in higher player counts because you just have less turns in general. Okay, this is the first big use of Clever. Uh, yeah, only playing the one animal. Just playing the monkey. Doesn't really care about the venom, but moves the sponsors down. So that's the first good use of Clever ability. Doesn't have a sponsor to play, doesn't care about five money, doesn't necessarily want to advance the break, so just moves it down. Okay, blue just drawing some cards. Uh, they're in a very tight position. We can, well, we can conclude that Blue is going to use sponsors to move the break marker forward because it's, it's either going to be that or Xing out animals, but. Orange getting a university. That is Orange's first building of any kind because they, uh, because they supported two projects already. The Tarsier is a very good animal. Uh, maybe less so in Tomowaki's opinion because of his low reputation game, but it is going to help him boost his reputation to get to 5 at least. So I imagine he's going to snap it up if it gets there. Yeah, so um, if you X out an action that has the Venom marker on it, it counts as basically using it. So that is one of the ways to get out of Venom, you just X out the action that has the Venom on it. Okay, red takes the shoe bill. Again, a bit weird going for like. Shoe bill is good because they have the ornithologist, but no birds, no Africa here. It just seems a little bit odd. Tomoaki, okay. Tomoaki prioritizes spending his worker before the break. Makes sense. We're pretty sure that blue is going to trigger the break. Uh, but yeah, the Asia partner zoo signa signals that we're going for the Tarsier. And upgrades Associate. We saw that from his stats. He upgrades Associate in 100% of his games. And yes, we see the first three actions on the Association board are two partner zoos and Australia at two and no universities. <coughs> Blue triggers the break. And yeah, if you go for the universities, there's no guarantee you're going to get either of the ones that you really want. You don't you don't want the two sites one at all. Whereas at least the partner zoos are relatively even. So yeah, we can see he's still stuck on... One reputation does not care at all about the reputation. 
Uh, unfortunately for him, Orange has... Okay, Orange has their size 2 enclosures, which they use to cover the draw from reputation range, and they take the Tarsier away. So that would have been a bit disappointing. Okay, Orange plays sponsors and just uh, gets Tech Institute. Pretty good. Red just going to take a partner zoo. I think Tomowaki would also be a bit dis get off the screen. I think he'd also be a bit disappointing because he wants to. I'm assuming he wants to go for this monkey, and the Africa partner zoo being gone is going to delay that a bit. Red just clevering build down to one. Yeah, I think he snaps it up. He's definitely going all in on the primates. It's. Like, such an odd strategy to me. But it's just the differences in four-player games compared to two-player games. Like, he has a pretty big money lead on everyone else. He's uh, slightly behind Orange in points, but he's got so much more money that it doesn't matter. But he's, like, fully committing to get to five primates first, and then just that's all he cares about. Uh, I guess he also can support bird breeding program because he does have the lesser bird of paradise. And yeah, the thing about primates is the top players don't really value them because there are less primates than a lot of the other species. I am pretty sure I'm correct in saying that. Orange taking a sunbathing reptile. There's another monkey that shows up. Red just playing animals. Okay, Red plays their hippo. So yeah, we should remember that's why they took the Africa partner zoo to play their hippo. Yeah, this is why I wanted to look at this game. Just the very odd decisions. Okay, Red does position their sponsors action nicely. They don't have a sponsor to play, but they get five money and move the break forward. So yeah, all of a sudden in this four-player game, it's like the break is at nine out of 15 and only two people have spent workers. Like the break could happen next turn. So I think that is one thing about like stuffing around getting, like how slow would getting a university be right now just to hopefully get an upgrade next round? The game just progresses too quickly compared to normal. Eighteen primates, yes. Other animals have twenty-five. Okay, we are building though. Kiosk and size four. Kiosk, good kiosk spot. Building two size fours. So we're still at this alligator in our hand the whole time. And it looks like it's finally going to get played. So that's another great thing about Engineer is you can just spam double size 4 key up enclosures. One for this monkey, one for the alligator. I do like that move a lot. The, the, I mean, the good thing about these primates is this one gives an extra action. So, I mean, that's not that bad, but they just give decent points as well. Even though this one doesn't have an ability... It ju they just give points. Whereas if you're playing small animals, it can be hard to accumulate that many points, but you, you at least know when you're taking your animals action, you're getting a lot of points on the board. And yes, we still see that Orange is very heavily contesting primates. We know that they have the Tarsier in hand as well. Uh, Orange takes the Asia Partner Zoo for that Tarsier. Do I think there's a specific base project that Tomoaki is working towards? I'm pretty sure primates. <laughs> Fairly sure. Well, yeah, it depends how you value the extra action, because I think an extra cards action is not as good as an extra random action of your choice. 
not random, like an extra chosen action of your choice. Okay, so this is going to be the alligator and snapping up the monkey. Uh, so dominance is different to assertion. Dominance is only gives you primates, which is why I was so surprised because primates is already here. So it'd be, this is blank text right here. Exactly. That's why the move shocked me so much. But yeah, we uh, played the alligator. We snapped up the monkey. So now we have one monkey played, three in hand. Uh, blue doing some weird things. Playing a dingo is like super weird right now because the pack is not giving any value for money. And the only thing here that would make you want to play the dingo is Australia. But okay, I will point out this, this is a mistake that I do see newer players make. You don't have to play every animal that comes into your hand. Like, I think the giraffe and the dingo are pretty poor animals for this game. Uh, they don't really help with any of the projects. They're just not really good value. He didn't use the boost ability at all. So I think when you want to, when you're like looking for animals, you want to find animals that have good abilities as well. That's something I look to do. Like, if we look at Tomoaki's animals here, Posturing, clever, snapping. He's made perfect use out of all of those. Clever action cards he's going to make use out of as well. Yeah, uh, the, the monkey is, is good art, good points. Okay, Orange plays that Tarsia, and that tree is the break, so nice timing there for Orange. Yeah, so we can see Tomoaki did not even spend a single worker this round. That's just how quickly it can go. And Sponsors is, is at 5, and he doesn't have a sponsor to play. What's his end goals again? Diverse Species. Yeah, it seems pretty unlikely he's going for aquatic, but he does have two water tags. Okay, orange actually getting like decent value out of all these two enclosures. He is filling up, so I might have been wrong. It's been a good move for him. Yeah, orange at three primates now. Um, and yeah, the thing about going all in on primates is it's not really helping diverse species that much red takes a university suspicious move clearly needs the two science icons for something maybe a golden tamarin that would get them for America, so I assume that must be it. Oh yeah, sponsors is in the way. So one other thing that I wanted to point out is in this game, no player X's out an action to get an X token. He just uses sponsors at five to advance the break and get money. But it does make sense because he needs a lot of money to like build a size five enclosure and play these guys. Blue just snapping up an Ibex. I think at least that makes more sense because two Europe could be quite easy to get. But spending a whole cards action to snap up like an average card for that, when you can just play it from range anyway, it's it's a weak move. I think we can definitely conclude blue is the weakest player out of all these. Yeah, I mean uh, his end goal is diverse species zoo. So uh, against red. There is there is no diverse species here. Orange spending 2x tokens to get the uni they want. They get to upgrade associate and draw. Okay, they really wanted release of uh, patents. Yeah, they're still under 25 appeal, so they can play it. 
with 8 CP they play, oh, surprisingly, uh, they play Breeding Program, okay. That's going to be very nice for their, where's Orange at? The orange is down here. Yeah, Breeding Program is going to be nice for their monkeys. They're just one monkey away now. Okay, red building. Red building a size 2 and a size 3. They take expert in Australia. Might indicate that they're going for 4 or 5 Australia. Uh, they are getting reasonably close to 5 Americas. Okay. Strength 5 Association, I assume this is going to be for Bird Breeding Program. And taking the 1 Shield and 2 Reputation. So 2 Reputation to get another card upgrade. And it's going to be Animals. Also donating because it's still reasonably cheap. So yeah, there's pretty much no way that Tamawaki is getting universities from here. It's just going to be too slow. So he's going to finish the game with just build animals and association upgrades. And cards doesn't even matter that much because he's not getting to 9 or 10 reputation either. I guess on Lake it is a better map to do it on because you don't get any reward for your fourth worker. So you don't really care about getting your worker from here as much, from 8 reputation. Orange building a size 5 enclosure. Red plays a Boa Constrictor, which uh, puts the Constriction on cards, which I think Tomoaki doesn't care about at all. He's just going to go ahead and play Animals. Oh, I didn't even notice that uh, he took the 2 Enclosure Reward to uh, fit in this Monkey, so he's just going to play the Monkey. Doesn't care about waiting to 5 to get the Reputation. And yeah, also still can't play this monkey because of no Africa icon. But yeah, using this opportunity to clever down cards. So I mean, let's look at the points and the incomes here. 26, 22, 24, 29. So points are very even, but somehow out of all this, Tomoaki has the most money by far and like even on, on income with the leader, but just... 23 more money. A big part of that has been the discounts from the early partner zoos and hydrologists doing a lot of work as well. Blue reaches the 5 CP reward first, well second, and they put in a uh, times 2 on builds, which is Probably not the thing that you want to be times twoing, but I guess there's not really much else to times two, so I probably would have been tempted to, to take five money in that position. Orange has primate breeding program. That's going to be pretty useful for Tamawaki here to be able to leech off that. Okay, time to discard the scoring cards. Keeps diverse species. Yeah, I think there's more upside with it than than uh, aquatic. Red plays their expert on Australia. They're at least going to use the pouch ability, so it's a four four appeal move. It's not that bad. Tomoaki just going to spend their association worker before a break happens. Yeah, I know, look at... We've got one player upgrading sponsors here, but yeah, everyone else just upgrading associate. 
No worries, Lars. Catch you later. Uh, he chooses to donate seven, gets five back from reaching five uh, five CP. Okay, this is going to be a big building move for Blue. Building with times two. Yeah, problem is I can't scroll down to look at it because the uh, the play button is up here. And not using clever because they want to play animals, but would have been tempted to like clever down cards or something. They already have five cards in hand. Orange playing their release of patents, so giving some nice money to everyone else. But can't complain about getting two CP from a card. Red finally reached five Americas. I didn't actually check what animal they played. Oh, yeah, they played Boa Constrictor and Coty to get to five Americas. Oh, okay, they needed the science icon to play the boa constrictor. That makes sense. Okay, size 5 enclosure for the monkey. And sure, might as well play another one while we're here. With Adventure Playground. That's a sneaky little move that people might have missed. But with the next break coming... He can put his size 2 enclosure here for the play play sponsor for money. And then Adventure Playground is just a free 4 appeal. 4 appeal for very little money. Okay, Blue playing their Ibex, which advances the break a little bit. And a Porcupine, so they, that, that's good. They're focusing on Europe now. That's a good decision from them. Orange drawing from the deck one at a time again. We like to see it. There's large animals and Europe release sitting here. I'm kind of surprised no one's taken them yet. Oh yeah, and expert on Europe when there's Europe here. That's also very surprising that it lasted that long. Tomoaki just going to trigger the break because, as we said, he's going to play Adventure Playground from this spot. So, yeah. Wants to trigger the break so that he can play both animals after he gets the Africa partner zoo. Be very funny if it disappeared again. Yep, building over the... Play, play sponsor. And just in the corner here. So pretty neat zoo. Um, at this stage, you might as well fill it up for Engineer. So it's like 12, 12 tickets if he fills it up now. Plus he'd get the CP from Hydrologist, so it's worth it. Okay, Orange does the same thing, but they cover up the spot and play Science Institute. Mm, they possibly have Research Zoo or just need the science icons. Blue starts by playing Guided School Tours. Okay, let's do a quick uh, points update. Red currently in the lead. Red currently in the lead. They're slowly working towards Australia. They have two, uh, and they have they have enough money to do things. Orange less money, less points. Blue less, slightly less points, same money. Tomawaki less points than everyone, but decent money, which is about to get spent very soon. Yeah, if that was the Africa partner zoo, that would have really hurt Tomowaki. 
And look at how he's positioned his uh, next couple of moves as well. Red building. Red covering up the spot to play Expert on Europe. Which uh, doesn't do a whole lot for them. He already has the Africa partner, so what am I talking about? So anyway. Yeah, this move is perfectly positioned. He's got cards just at going to be at 5 as soon as he uses action cards. So he's positioned cards very well there. And plays both the monkeys. Which gets him to 4. Um, this player is still at 3. Well, they're still really at 4 because they have breeding program. Where are they? Down here. They have breeding program still. No, no monkeys in sight to play though. Orange can still play free range. Just drawing from the deck. Unfortunately, not really good animals here for him. But gets rid of the horse because I guess why not? Yeah, taking four CP is probably the, the right idea here. Supporting primates at four. Orange plays a small hunter animal and the mandrill. So, I mean, that's that's the primate that you really want if you're going for five primates. Gives two primate icons. Not that they even needed the fifth one. But yeah, it gives great points as well. So yeah, we know now that Tomoaki is not getting to five primates, but seemingly it doesn't matter. Man drill, half man, half drill. <laughs> yeah, so this is what I mean about, like when you do have these big animals, you feel good playing animals late game because you know you're getting points. Red just spent a whole animal action there to play a slow worm. Which, I mean, it is the second Europe icon they need to support to Europe, but with all this money, you want to be playing the big animals now. There's just not enough time to be playing one small animal. <laughs> Here we are going to see primates at four and takes X tokens. The game is very close to ending. Uh, also using this opportunity to draw cards, because why not? Would be pretty good to take large animals here. Yep. And sponsorship primates is... Well, it's four, four points, can't complain about that. Penguin pool, not going to do too much. I mean, it could also give four points if the, if the rear gets played as well. Plus, it would also cover up some of this map, so maybe it's not as bad as I'm saying. Orange playing Expert in Asia. Decent move, gave them 5 points. Okay, they're at 63 now, but no money. Tomoaki is also at 63 with no money, so it's a close game. Red has plenty of money, but just no way to spend it. Yeah, I could see him playing the penguin pool. Red also... Yeah, this is where they fall behind. Taking an action now to take a university is just... Not what you want to be doing at this stage of the game. You just want to be supporting projects because the game is going to end very soon. Uh, I was thinking it's easier with Engineer. Like, pretty much with Engineer 2, 2, 1, 1, 1, you can do it with a normal 5 build action. If you just do your size 2 twice, 2, 2, kiosk, single, pavilion, that sort of thing. But he doesn't have the money. Oh, he probably does have the money, actually, because of Hydrologist. Oh, to be close, 1, 2, 3. No, he's actually 1 money short. So he does play the Penguin Pool. Alright, fair enough. 
This is a very awkward spot in here. Because with the break, he's going to get a size 2 enclosure. But he's not going to get a size 1 enclosure for free. Blue plays the European Bison. So that's the second game in a row we're seeing a European Bison. And second game in a row that it's doing a lot of work. And they also get their third petting zoo. So Blue's actually made a decent comeback there. They've just got their fifth Europe symbol. Orange drawing cards. They take Explorer for the huge amounts of money, no doubt. Yeah, they gave him a decent amount of sponsor cards. Oh yeah, so Orange had times two cards. Uh, from the Mandrill. So they get to draw cards twice. What do they have at five? They have build at five. They actually didn't upgrade build at all. Where's their map? So yeah, taking the size two enclosure is a decent reason not to upgrade build. But also it feels like they have no space to play animals. <laughs> the bison is definitely a top 10 European size five animal. <laughs> Maybe even a top five European size five animal. Red just playing science library from the display. We have an eagle here. Uh, which, I mean, I would be looking to snap up right now. I guess we can do that in, in two different ways, yes. Play large animals, uh, take the snapping ability, snap it up. Yeah, I like that. The tiger also would have been very playable. I think, I think you just don't want to leave the eagle for other people. Plus there's extra incentive with, with penguin pool already played. But I mean, they give comparable points. The tiger's obviously better. Choosing not to donate because we want to spend an action building before a break is triggered, I guess. And we need two, two money to build. Blue supporting Europe for five. And they snap up the tiger, uh, which they can't play, I guess, just to deny it from other players. Yeah, two people have Asia. Two people meet the requirements. Okay, orange supporting primates at five. That puts them slightly ahead. Uh, they just might not have enough money or enclosures to, to like finish off the game strongly. Never mind, Orange also has Explorer, which is going to help them solve their money issues. What did they just do? Oh, Orange used their determination already. I think they went a bit early there. I guess their hope is they want to trigger the end of the game before there's another break, but I don't see that likely. I don't see that as being likely. Red just drawing a lot of animals from the display. Uh, so that's a great question. So how do you think they came up with the ability names? Do you think they just looked at the eagle and said, that guy is determined, so they picked determination? I can't answer that question, but it's a good one to ask the designers. I don't really know how you'd come up with determination for the name of an extra turn, or sprint for drawing cards when sprint should probably be for advancing the break. Anyway, we, uh, we have a build action. Uh, building a pavilion and choosing not to build anything else. He could have built a second pavilion and not worried about this size to enclosure. But obviously the money's going to be a little bit tight, so he'd rather just keep the four extra money. And use it to clever down cards, which is another perfect use of this clever ability. 
So he's really maximized all the clever abilities. <laughs> Blue tree is the break. Uh, if I'm correct, this game should not have too many more turns in it left. In fact, maybe even one turn. I'm going to I'm going to have a look at the stats after this game and we'll see just how just what the breakdown of actions was but it's very informative. Oh yeah, so blue gets the snap first. I guess there's not much that Tomowaki needs to snap up. We're going to look at the turn count as well. And yeah, there is just no time to do anything in four-player games. Takes the Tapir. Um, yeah, sure. It's slightly better value than, than the Rhea. Just. It's uh, seven points versus... Oh, they're the same. It's seven versus seven because of Penguin Pool. Uh, okay, but diverse animals... Two birds, one herbivore. I'd still rather play the rear because it gets you to four birds. We'll see which one he plays. Maybe he's going to rate the digging ability higher. Orange building, red building. Red just building a bird apiary. Okay, animal time. Yeah, eagle was the obvious uh, play there. And yeah, this should be the last turn of the game. There's also low mountain range, like, in range there. Yeah, decides to play the rear to uh, keep diverse species. Draws an emu, which is whatever, doesn't doesn't matter at this point. Uh, do they have anything else to support except for low mountain range? Oh yeah, they have four Americas, of course. Oh, that's another reason to play the Rhea. They It gets them the fourth America, which is uh, slightly better, yeah. Uh, I, yeah. And I forgot about Determination as well. Yeah, I forgot about this... Uh, being very slack. So yeah, sponsorship primates just a handy little four point move at the end. True, and it um cost fifth yeah, and it also leaves them with enough money to donate. So more good reasons for playing the rear. Uh, yeah, red playing anim uh, blue playing animals with their last turn. So blue did not get to make use out of determination here. The game obviously ended before they were ready. Their association's not near five enough for them to use it. That's one thing that you have to really be paying attention to. Where's orange at? Orange playing animals. Play the dugong. I'm going to dig from their hand for a little bit. And they play the Cobra. So that makes sense as to why you'd play animals. So they've targeted this. They are... Uh... Hmm. They don't have enough X tokens, though. Can Orange support any projects? No, they only had one large animal. Orange. They don't have a bird. They already supported primates. Yeah, so unfortunately for Orange, they they didn't have a project to support 
to get that extra action. That means their last thing here is just taking a... Oh, it's not bad. So yeah, this is a 3 upgrade game for Tomowaki, which we saw that they end up doing about half of their games, roughly. Red playing animals with the last action. Oh yeah, orange also used up their determination from last round, but we can see that blue and red didn't use their determination ability at all. Uh, red obviously doesn't have anything to support either. Exactly. Tomoaki had other things to be doing. Okay, final scoring. Orange did have Research Zoo. Engineer, Hydrologist, one from Diverse Species, which was not even the birds in the end, because Red played two birds. Uh, just Primates. But yeah, a pretty close finish, actually. Orange within five points. Orange had Research Zoo, yeah, so they maxed out that. So that was a really good, actually, last last university move for them. Got them, like, the equivalent of five CPs. But yeah, let's, uh, let's look at the stats here. So the game was over in, well, he obviously started four, so he only he got one less turn than everyone, but 27 turns. That is, in, if this was a two-player game, that would be really, really fast. Like, my, my record is 26. But this just seems like an average four-player game. I think his average number of turns was, like, 30. So you just have, like, those three or four less turns than usual compared to a two-player game. But even in that time, we had five breaks. One, two, two. So it means that your income is more important in four-player games because you're going to be getting income more often. Uh, so if you can spend all your money, you're going to be getting more points. We saw that Red had that much income, but they just couldn't spend their money in time. Uh, number of actions. Build 7, that was even with the, like, uh, two build actions in the first break that were only pavilions. Animals action 6, fine. Cards actions only 3. Doesn't want to waste any time doing cards. We saw that one of those cards actions was an extra action from the African monkey. And then twice, or, yeah, twice he clevered down cards from 5 to 1. Association 8, Sponsors 6, and a couple of those sponsors, like maybe even 2 or 3 of them, were just to advance the break and get money. Yeah, but Association 8, uh, Xing out ends, yeah, instead of an action, 0 for everyone. So yeah, just completely different gameplay. Didn't get a single university... Didn't need to, just focused on money, just had one reputation from, like, all the way to the second break. Yeah, early economy, spending your money, ended the game with zero money. And all that work for uh, plus three ELO. Let's uh, have a look at what he's rated now. So yeah, I, should, I also wanted to point out that he is an extremely strong player in a lot of games. I've seen him around the site. Uh, like, number two in Caverna. These are, like, quite heavy games, Gaia Project. But yeah, just comes into Ark Nova, 153% win rate. Barely any games, so this guy knows what he's doing. Let's uh, just take a quick look at his stats. Number of turns, 30. So, for a top 4 player player, 30 turns is about how many you're going to get in a 4 player game. And averages 8 reputation, which is just so insanely below the average. 
cards actions down at four on average. X tokens instead of action less than one. Money gained. Money gained is a bit misleading because you're probably going to have five or six breaks most games, whereas in two player games you're probably only going to have four or five breaks. Yeah, donates a lot as well. And really does like to snap up cards. Draws a lot less from the deck, obviously, because he takes less cards actions, but snaps up a lot. Plays fewer sponsors because he has less time. Covering the map, I think this was roughly average for, like, the top players. And yeah, that we see upgraded association every single game. Cards very rarely. Yeah, that that is the thing about four player games is that you have very you don't have as much control over how the game is going to go. So yeah, it didn't feel like he was that far ahead at any point in the game, but. The eagle definitely helped him in the end, getting that. Uh, never x that game, but on average, like, once a game, a bit less than once a game, X token instead of an action. I guess he didn't need to because he had the clever abilities throughout the game. Snapping, yeah. I think if there's a card that you that's like that's going to be useful for you and you see it in the display, snapping up is usually a good move. If you draw from the deck, you can quite easily get three useless cards and just block you for a little while. So I'm a fan of snapping as well. But yeah, very very interesting four player games. That's a hundred and. 100 victories from 123 games because 10 of them were in training mode or when the game was in alpha. And I'm pretty sure all of them were 4 player. Just only 4 player. The good thing about 4 player is even... Like, because the opponents are so weak in general, even when you don't get first, you're probably likely to get second and... Second in this game is only minus four. Let's just have a look at some of the strength of the opponents. That's the game that we looked at. I mean, still pretty decent opponents as well. Three hundreds. Three hundreds. He might set a limit to only 200 plus. That would make sense. And these are all turn-based games. So it would make yeah, it would make more sense if it's only two hundred plus opponents, which it seems to be. <laughs> yes, and four play games do take a lot longer, but I guess in turn based you don't care as much because you just log on, take your turn, you can have multiple of them going. He's got 15 turn-based games going on right now. All, m most of them are Knova. So he doesn't care. Just have your turn. But this would get so confusing for me. I could not do this. Yeah, that's all the games we're going to look at today. Uh, usual time on Sunday for my BGA playing stream. Otherwise, thank you everyone for watching and see you next time.